So as I make these uh, scientific glass blowing videos, uh, I think it's very important uh, to explicitly point out the reason I'm making them is because I am a chemist and in chemistry we need to know how to manipulate glass. Uh, whether you're using the torch uh, or whether you're using uh, some other means, uh, if you've got glass and you need it to do something, change its shape, uh, size, uh, put a hole in it, whatever, uh, well, you better figure out how to do it because that is critical to your job or your research. When I was an undergraduate, uh, young and eager to, uh, to jump in the lab and do something, uh, after spending what felt like an eternity of just watching, uh, I was volunteered uh, to open up a ampule full of uh, uh, deuterated acetonitrile, about one milliliter, and that had to be done in the glove box. Now, what I've got in front of me right now, uh, these are two glass ampules. They're actually opened. Uh, this one is actually about two milliliters. Uh, this one is larger. I don't know if it's 20 or how much. Uh, I actually bought these. These I found. Uh, they're quite nice. Uh, now, what I mean uh, with a glass ampule, normally the top, after you place your liquid or solid in here, uh, this would be sealed uh, with a torch under vacuum. Uh, typically is how we do it in the chemistry lab. Uh, in some cases for pharmaceuticals and uh, cosmetics, they can actually seal these at one atmosphere uh, with the right equipment. Uh, now, these particular ampules are quite nice because they're pre-scored. There's actually a little line right there at the neck, so snapping it open, usually they have a specialized tool to do that, is very easy. The glass ampule that I needed to break open, uh, I had to do it in the glove box for one thing, uh, which is very awkward, uh, did not have a nice little score line on it. So what that meant was I was going to have to take a triangle file, just like this, score the ampule at the neck and snap it. Hopefully without uh, shattering the ampule or stabbing it through the gloves uh, that I was wearing and my thumb, uh, which would have been uh, catastrophic, mostly because of uh, cutting the uh, dry box gloves. Uh, my, my skin can always heal those you'd have to re replace, and I would, I would not want to explain that uh, to my undergraduate mentor if I, if I would have essentially ruined the dry box and destroyed uh, the very expensive deuterated acetonitrile. Uh, the ampule we had was about one milliliter, and you needed uh, about 0.7 milliliters, about 70% of it, uh, to make uh, the uh, sample that we were going to use. So if I literally would have spilled one or two drops of it, uh, it would have ruined the experiment anyway. So uh, to practice uh, cracking open the ampule, what I did was, uh, these are uh, disposable glass pipettes. These actually, the tips have been broken off, uh, which is why I can use them for this demo without caring. Uh, but I actually uh, got a whole box of these, with, and they were actually like the long tip style. Uh, they were quite nice, but they're disposable. And so what I did was, I practiced scoring and snapping on these. Uh, I'm going to put this, hopefully it's in focus. Uh, there's several ways to do this, and I'll talk about this technique as we go forward. Okay. So I've dragged the file across it, and because I'm doing this uh, with the camera uh, uh, right at my, uh, at my elbow and shoulder, uh, it's kind of awkward for me, so I place a little bit of saliva, a little bit of spit there. Now the, the thing is, the scratch is right there, and one of the things I always recommend is uh, take your fingernail and just drag it across there. You can actually feel the scratch. Now I position the scratch so it is pointing away from me. I put my thumbs on either side of the scratch. There's a little discoloration mark here that has nothing to do with it. And then very gently, I push forward and pull apart. The motion that I did was bending a little bit, but actually pulling apart. What you don't want to do is try and 
bend this like you were trying to break a, a, a wooden branch, you know, like a tree branch. I'm not doing this. I'm taking this, I'm pushing forward and pulling away. That way, as you saw, when the glass pops, there you go. So, uh, when I was an undergraduate, uh, with my, you know, uh, this actually, I've cleaned this up a little bit, but again, any chemistry lab you go into, you'll find a bunch of triangle files. Most likely, they will be 20, 30, 40 years old. Uh, they'll be very rusty, but they'll be still, still be good. They'll still do their job, uh, in this case, uh, of scoring and snapping. And essentially, to prepare myself for scoring and snapping the ampule, uh, I must have uh, sacrificed uh, a dozen, maybe 20 of these uh, disposable pipettes doing the scoring and snapping method uh, until I got the mechanics right with my hands where I could do it and I didn't have to think about it because this is the kind of, of physical technique that once you've got the mechanics down, you feel good about it, you can do it no problem. If you overthink it, if you hesitate, uh, it'll be disastrous. And what I mean by disastrous is if you take a piece of glass uh, rod or tubing, this is again some scrap glass, uh, and you break it incorrectly, when it breaks, it will break randomly and like, you know, it defies uh, 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 science, but almost like a magnet, some shard of glass will find a way to go into your hand, uh, into your thumb. Statistically, uh, the odds of you cutting yourself is close to 100%, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, just shows again how finicky glass can be if you, if you don't uh, treat it correctly. So, uh, in my case, it was both about the mechanics and uh, making sure that I could do it in one try because the vial that I had, you know, the deuterated acetonitrile, that was the only vial we had, and that stuff ex is expensive. Uh, I should mention the reason, uh, again, these are my sample vials, you know, just uh, this is just food coloring, by the way, uh, just to make it show up better. Uh, the reason why that deuterated acetyl nitrile was in an ampule and expensive is because it was uh, uh, anhydrous. It had been distilled to remove all the water and oxygen, and so it was sealed under vacuum inside of that ampule. Uh, so when I opened it in the glove box, uh, it was going to be very pure. No water uh, or oxygen in the sample. And for the research I was doing at the time, uh, that was absolutely critical, especially the water. Uh, so now I'll do this again. So I'm going to take my glass triangle. By the way, one of the things is uh, you, you will see people score it like this where they're holding it in their hands. Uh, if you read through any any textbook, they, they tell you to place the object, uh, you know, on a nice, flat, clean countertop, uh, remove any clutter. Uh, and again, with the edge of the triangle uh, file, I'm taking this, I'm pushing down, but not with a tremendous amount of force, just enough that I've got some pressure, and there it goes. And this glass is, uh, it's a very, uh, very thin glass, and the diameter of, uh, of this tube, actually I've got this right here, uh, this is 6.8 millimeters, almost 7 millimeters, but about, according to this, yeah, 6.8 millimeters. So it's not a very uh, large diameter uh, tubing. Again, it's the disposable glass uh, tubing, so again, put a little spit on there. Uh, Here's what I do not have to do. Uh, I made a scratch. It's a it's a pretty small scratch. Let's see if I can zoom in on that uh, with the film uh, or the. Uh, uh, I don't have to sit here and try and saw it. Uh, once you've made a scratch, you should be able to pop it. Now, uh, the thicker the glass and the larger the diameter, the better off you are if you give it a very good deep scratch and have it go around the circumference. It doesn't have to go all the way around, but you want it to go around, you know, I typically try and go a quarter, uh, halfway, or thereabouts. Uh, so now, I take this, there's the scratch right here, and again, I can actually feel it with my fingernail, so I take it, I turn it away from me. I have to be careful. Uh, 
since the tip is broken, that's actually sharp glass. So the last thing I want to do is focus on this and then jam the other part into my hand. So you shouldn't do it this way, uh, which is again why I'm doing it. So I got it away from me and give it a little bit of pressure. Yeah, see, uh, it's almost ready to pop, but it hasn't. So what I'm going to do is I take the file and I bring it back to where the scratch is and I, and I re-score it. I probably could get away with applying just a little bit more force, but for this demo, uh, I'm trying to show you what not to do. Uh, it didn't pop when I just gave it just a little bit of force, and I tried it a couple times. Your instinct will be to muscle it. Don't do that. Get back into position. And there it goes. Uh, if I would have tried to, to brute force it uh, without, without that second scoring, it might have worked, or it might have broken out of control and cut me. So this is a case where apply just a little bit of force. If it doesn't pop, you can you know check your orientation of your fingers and your thumbs of you know are you are you pushing and pulling in the right spot. If you are and it's still not breaking with just again a little bit of force, then do what I just did: rescore it and then do it again. Because if you try and muscle it. Uh, you, you will cut yourself. You'll break the glass in an uncontrolled manner and it'll go right into your hand. And I'm not speaking theoretically, I have cut myself far more times uh, than I can count or you know could even uh, uh, honestly admit uh, working with glass. Uh, so, uh, and most of my uh, transgressions uh, as far as getting cut uh, happened uh, back in 2017 when I got back into glass blowing. So I was relearning these techniques and getting used to it. Uh, so it was a it was a painful uh, experience. Now uh, the steel triangle file is an excellent uh, piece of equipment to use for cutting glass tubing, glass rod. However, as I mentioned this in uh, the uh, what video was it? Uh, what was I demonstrating? Uh, something. Uh, you can also use a uh, glass cutter, uh, which has a little scoring wheel on it. And this is also used for flat glass, but it does exactly the same job. So you've got a steel wheel right there. And take this, and I can actually hear it. And there's the, the white line of uh, the score mark. Take this, score it. I'm sorry, uh, put a little drop of spit on there, and again, get behind it, just... Oop, there. there it goes. Uh, you can see uh, the... Uh, uh, this was from the junk pile. Uh, the, uh, the reason... Actually, that's... I hope I got that on film. Uh, the reason this stuff broke, even though I was breaking this, is when glass breaks, it kind of sends a shock wave up and down the glass. This is what was known as a cold seal. So these little spheres were put on with a cold seal. So I wasn't touching that part at all. So when I broke it here, it actually caused that to break, uh, which again, uh, is one of the reasons why you have to be really, really careful when you're working with glass. Uh, I wasn't expecting that actually to break. I wasn't concerned about it because, again, it wasn't uh, my hand wasn't touching it. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, again, that's something you want to uh, always keep in mind that when you when you pop it, uh, it should just take a tiny amount of energy when you when you uh, when you break the glass and. Right now, the edges are razor sharp, so if I was going to use this, uh, I would need to fire polish it. But again, this was actually from the waste jar, uh, so this was just to show uh, the technique of using the glass uh, cutter uh, for uh, scoring and snapping, just like the triangle file. Uh, a couple other glass cutters that we have. Uh, this little guy. Same idea, it's got a little steel cutting cutting wheel in there. I think that's steel, it might be tungsten carbide. Uh, again, the idea is uh, you, 
you take a piece of glass. By the way, one of the things you don't want to do is try and cut a piece of glass where you've only got a very tiny amount of, of leverage to, to break it. You have to be really careful about that. If you did need to remove, uh, you know, say like one centimeter of the glass, uh, you'd be better off doing it with the torch uh, uh, or uh, there are some other techniques of cold working uh, where you can actually use, essentially it's a band saw that has a uh, cutting uh, blade on it that's designed for glass. Uh, because what would happen is if I scored it here and I tried to apply some pressure, because I don't have a really good point of leverage, it's very possible that I could break the glass in the wrong place and, and again stab myself. And there are some other techniques besides uh, simply heating it and pulling it off. You can score the glass and do what's known as a hot spot where that forces the glass to crack. Uh, and I'll show that technique. That technique is typically used for much larger diameter rod or tubing. Uh, but what I'll do here is again just to demonstrate uh, this device. So place it in here, rotate. I'm applying a little bit of pressure until I, I can hear it. And this score mark that I made is very over the top. In other words, it doesn't need to be that long, but it is better that you have a good scratch that is, uh, doesn't have to be the, uh, super deep, but deep enough that you can feel it with your fingernail. And typically somewhere in that one half uh, to, uh, or one quarter to one half uh, of the arc, you can, you can make it longer. Again, put a little water on there, a little spit on there. Uh, again, I rotated it away from myself, put my thumbs behind it, okay, and I'm gonna try and get this lined up. I'm putting it in a weird angle just so it's uh, easier for the camera to see it. And now I'm pushing forward and pulling out. So I'm gonna push forward a little bit and then move my hands away from each other, but not with a tremendous amount of force. Now, one of the things to notice, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, uh, just it's focusing on my hand. All I'm using are my wrists. I'm away from each other, but not with a tremendous amount of force. Now, one of the things to notice, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, uh, just it's focusing on my hand. All I'm using are my wrists. I'm, I'm just doing that. I am not like using the rest of my arms to any degree. Uh, in other words, this is not something you try and muscle. If you do that, you will eventually cut yourself when it breaks and uh, is it shatters. So it's always a little pop. And in that second example I did with the tubing where when I scored it, I could feel that it wasn't quite gonna, wasn't gonna break with that small amount of force. If I would've, if I would've uh, again, tried to muscle it, I would now be making a, a video of myself, you know, going to the emergency room or, or something like that. So again, just a little pop. Uh, this guy is essentially uh, 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 another little cutting wheel. This one uh, actually has a nice big cutting wheel. Uh, and uh, it's called Jaws, uh, the original. Uh, so uh, again, uh, lots, lots of options that you have. Uh, I, I really like this, uh, this one uh, now. This actually, this is the um, uh, most recent uh, cutter that I've got. Oh, before I forget, uh, the tungsten carbide blade, uh, this is also excellent. Uh, this particular blade uh, has seen about two and a half years of uh, service uh, and it's, it's taken some damage, so uh, I need to replace it. But it's exactly the same as how you uh, work with the file where you score something and then snap it. It's just that now you're using uh, a tungsten uh, blade. And these, uh, these blades are razor sharp when you get them. So you have to be incredibly careful uh, when you're working with one of these. Uh, however, these, uh, these type of cutters uh, are, are excellent because of, uh, they're, they're a little bit safer uh, than doing it with uh, the uh, tungsten blade uh, or the file or the cutting uh, glass cutter, this one. Uh, again, you can come in here, place that in here, and if I actually apply enough pressure while I rotate, I can actually get this to snap without actually having to do uh, do this uh, part with my hands. Uh, but 
I prefer to make the score and then snap it by hand rather than brute force it. Uh, I don't have them here. At home I have some tile snips and those work the way where uh, there are actually two cutting wheels. You put the piece of glass uh, rod in between and when you press down it, it snaps it and basically it ejects the uh, 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 the glass rod that you cut. Those work uh, those, those are very cheap uh, and they work uh, very well uh, but uh, again when you're when you're first learning uh, I would recommend if you can get uh, a nice pair of glass cutters like uh, especially these two uh, to go go and get that so here's my score and one of the things I'm going to do right now is normally uh, you you lick your finger and you put a little spit on here I'm gonna I'm not going to do that uh, now just to show that get behind here it'll still break right uh, so uh, the adding a little bit of water uh, I believe the theory is since you've you've roughened up the surface when you add a little bit of water it will expand the glass and make it easier to break uh, I think that is true but it's also superstition uh, the reason I do like to do the lick lick your finger and then put a little spit on there is that it gets you kind of into a ritual where you're doing everything the same way and you know before you get ready to break it you put a little spit on there rotate it and pop it that way you you don't forget something and and make a mistake and, and cut yourself so if you're if you're following all of these steps uh, very methodically and doing it the same way over and over and over again you get yourself to the point where again you can break the glass uh, and you can see, you know, very clean edges. Sometimes you'll end up with little shards of glass sticking out, uh, typically because you didn't have a good score. Uh, but uh, this method of cutting glass uh, uh, is, is very important uh, in the chemistry lab because, again, I gave my, you know, story of having to pop open the ampule, but there are also many times where you'll have a piece of glass tubing or rod and for whatever reason it needs to be cut uh, again this is some scrap uh, tubing where uh, either I or a student fused it here uh, for a test exercise so it would be the same idea of taking this finding where I wanted to score it placing the scoring blade here rotating okay and you can see I've got a really nice score right there. Put just a little bit, spit on there, and there it goes. All right. Uh, again, this uh, this was nine uh, nine millimeter uh, glass tubing. Uh, I believe that is you know just standard wall tubing, uh, and scoring it, snapping it was a piece of cake. Uh, I could have done the exact same thing with my uh, rusty uh, triangle file. Uh, I've also uh, seen people, and I actually have one uh, at home, uh, where they use the uh, uh, knife that's used for sharpening uh, lawnmower blades or other types of garden equipment. Uh, I've seen professional glass blowers, uh, like on YouTube, where they'll literally pull out like uh, essentially a rock. Uh, it's like it's a fragment of a sharpening stone or something like that, and they'll use that to score and snap it. So there are, there are many ways to do this. Uh, you can you can be more on the high tech side, uh, or you can be much more you know on the primitive side. Uh, as long as the way you're doing it is safe, uh, you'll be okay. Now, one of the things, uh, both uh, for this video and uh, just because I've been doing this so long, uh, it is a good idea uh, to have, you know, like a set of gloves that you can use while you're wearing this. Uh, I'm comfortable enough breaking uh, a glass tubing like this and glass rod like this that I normally wouldn't wear gloves or uh, 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 be too concerned about it, but uh, a trick you can do if you don't have a pair of gloves, you know, is when you're getting ready to score and snap it, you can have uh, both ends covered with uh, this. So if I was going to if I was going to snap this, 
I could have both ends covered uh, with a little piece of uh, paper towel uh, and that would give me a little bit of protection uh, as opposed to wearing, uh, you know, these, these are Kevlar gloves. They're uh, cut resistant and uh, somewhat heat resistant, but that would be overkill. Uh, now, I say that would be overkill, uh, which is fine, until I cut myself and then I say, ah, I should have been wearing gloves. Uh, so again, uh, this is the kind of thing that you, you do want to take those type of safety precautions when you are first starting out uh, uh, cutting glass and doing anything uh, uh, that, like I said, uh, inherently uh, can cut you or burn you, uh, like glass blowing. But as you get more comfortable, uh, you'll, you'll find that you can use your judgment of when do I need to be wearing, you know, gloves or, uh, uh, or you know, like I said, something as simple as a paper towel uh, for that. Now, again, uh, one of the uh, uh, demonstrations I will be doing later is what happens if you have... A much larger piece of rod or tubing that you want to score and snap. So this is 22, about 22 millimeters uh, in diameter. So there we go. Uh, I would not feel comfortable using any of these tools to score and snap it. I could do it. I could probably get away with it. But there are better techniques that you can use. Uh, that are less likely to cause you cutting yourself as well as just making a mess of the glass that you're you're trying to break. So uh, this method, I calling it you know glass cutting, but you're you're breaking the glass. You know you're scoring it and then breaking it along a fault line. So you don't have as much control as if it was a piece of wood and you were sawing through it, right? So this is literally, you score it, you break it, and, and hope for the best. Uh, in uh, most situations, again, if you're using uh, rod or tubing of a relatively short diameter, uh, it's not going to be a problem. By the way, one of the things, I'm just double checking here, is because this is where I scored and snapped this glass tubing. Well, it's it now has a uh, razor sharp edge, so I have to be careful about that. Uh, one of the things of using some of these these tools, is, uh, like in this case, you can. I'm gonna just. So here's where I'm gonna. You can see by applying too much pressure, uh, you, you can end up crushing it. Uh, so that's one of the things about using these two particular tools that you need to be gentle with them, right? In other words, I took this and I just mashed it in there, and as you can see, the result is, well, I, I, I broke it, uh, and it, and it was a mess. Uh, so let me try that again. So I'm going to take this, I'll do it right about here. And now, instead of pushing down with a lot of aggression, I press enough that I can hear that as I rotate it, it's, it's making that scratching noise, and that's fine. Okay, so you can see, I've got, a nice, I've got a nice scratch there. I could go all the way around, but it's really not needed. And now, just a little bit of pressure, and there we are. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, almost forgot to mention that, that as great as these tools are for cutting glass, if you misuse them, if, like I said, you, you muscle it, if you overpower it, you're, you're going to end up breaking the glass and it'll be out of control when it breaks. Uh, so I had my hand far enough back that I knew I wasn't going to basically end up with a shard of it in my, in my hand, but if I, like I said, wasn't paying attention, you know, and had my finger like right here. Uh, uh, again, uh, you could you could really like I said cut yourself pretty badly. So uh, again, there are other techniques for cutting glass, uh, both cold working, where again we're doing this uh, with glass that uh, is not hot. There's no torch. Uh, there's no flame involved. Uh, and I will go through some of the techniques that we use the torch where I could take my larger diameter tubing you know, like this, 
score it, then take a hot piece of hot glass, uh, molten glass, touch it to that position, and then it will break. Uh, so uh, there'll be more more videos uh, videos to come. And uh, before I conclude. So one of the reasons why uh, scoring and snapping or breaking glass uh, using other methods is, is very useful. Uh, this is a burette uh, from uh, freshman chemistry uh, that uh, the top of it is broken. So you can see right here the edge is uh, very jagged, very sharp. Uh, I could fire polish it as it is right now, but what I'd rather do is get a clean edge, and the easiest way to do that would be to score it right here uh, between the USA and uh, the, uh, the temperature uh, right here, and then remove that section of glass, then fire polish it. Now, this is less than a centimeter uh, of where I would score it to the end of the glass. so. Using the techniques that I've showed you of scoring it and then trying to snap it, that is not going to work. That's a way to really hurt yourself, to, to cut yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another technique where I'm going to score it here, then I'm going to take a hot piece of glass, touch it, and then hopefully it will give me a clean break, and then from there I'll be able to fire polish it. Uh, now I could remove all of the glass uh, while it's hot and do it that way, but I, I think uh, for this particular uh, item uh, and my skill level, it's going to be much better for me to score it, uh, remove it uh, using what's called the hot spot method, then fire polish it, and it'll be fine. Uh, so again, very useful techniques uh, as far as breaking glass in a controlled manner. Uh, again, these are fundamental skills that you as a chemist, I'm assuming if you're watching this you're a chemist, uh, you want to have. If you're a professional glassblower, uh, you should not be watching this because uh, my technique is terrible. As I was making uh, this video on uh, the different methods for cutting uh, glass tubing and rod, uh, I realized I might as well go ahead and throw in uh, a quick demo of cutting uh, plate glass. This is a glass slide. So it's a flat piece of glass. I'm sure there are many ways to do it. Uh, the way uh, uh, I was taught is using this style of a glass cutter. You know, we've got the small, uh, small uh, steel cutting wheel on here. Uh, you want to put this onto a nice uh, flat surface. Uh, I'm going to try and cut this in half. Uh, I should mark it, but this will be fine. Uh, place the cutting wheel on uh, the surface, press down, not too too hard, and then move across and score. And I'm actually slowing down and removing pressure as I approach the edge, and the reason why is I don't want to hit this little edge uh, very rapidly because I could uh, end up uh, chipping the glass uh, at that point. Uh, so now before I actually uh, uh, attempt to break this, uh, I do want uh, you to see the scratch. So I'm going to put it against there. Okay, so I paused to uh, take a still image of the scratch uh, using the handle uh, of this reamer uh, purely for uh, contrast. Uh, so I can take the glass and put a little bit of moisture on it and just gently. Uh, again, uh, so I can take the glass and put a little bit of moisture on it and just gently. Uh, again, I barely placed any pressure on the glass. Uh, I pressed down just a little bit and then I pulled outward. I'm not trying to bend it. I'm, again, pressing a little bit and then pulling. If it doesn't do what just happened there, if it doesn't just pop instantly, uh, then you need to rescore it. And overall, you know, if you, uh, if you look at uh, the edge, you know, 
uh, it's it's pretty clean. Uh, I had a, a pretty decent score. Now, why would you need to do something like this with flat glass? There, there are many reasons. Uh, many of the chromatography plates, especially older styles, uh, are uh, on uh, flat glass like this, and they don't sell them in small segments, they sell them in big sheets, uh, so what you have to do is cut the segments out yourself. Uh, that's one of the things, uh, I did that quite a bit when I was a postdoctoral researcher. Uh, it was cheapest to buy chromatography plates in one big plate and then you just cut it up and use it as needed. Uh, there are other uh, types of experiments where uh, you can take a piece of uh, flat glass and then put different types of coatings on it uh, to make different materials like semiconductors uh, and the like. So. Uh, in the artistic community, uh, this this would be a method for cutting stained glass segments uh, or other other flat glass, uh, such as uh, dichroic glass, uh, would be another example. So again, another another t uh, technique. I probably could have used any of the other uh, scoring methods uh, as far as making that scratch uh, on the glass, uh, but again. Uh, this uh, glass cutter uh, is excellent for that application and that's typically what I use uh, for that. But again, uh, one of the things you'll find looking at my video and then comparing it to uh, other videos of glass blowers uh, who actually are, are, are practicing glass blowers, I should say, whether they're artistic or scientific, uh, that that's their entire career or the majority of their career. They'll have different techniques uh, than uh, what I do or what other people do based on their education, based on their ex work experience, you know, based on just what's available to them. Uh, so just keep that in mind that, uh, you know, something which seems straightforward as just cutting uh, some glass, uh, you can have uh, many different options. So here I'm showing a couple of styles of cutting wheels, uh, a traditional kind of cutting wheel and a small glass cutter, uh, a tungsten carbide blade, and uh, the ubiquitous uh, triangle file that you'll find in every, every chemistry lab. So my recommendation, uh, if you're a chemistry student, uh, practice with the, uh, the triangle file because the other glass cutting uh, uh, tools just might not be available. So uh, again, keep that in mind that sometimes uh, you just simply don't have uh, the, the best equipment, uh, so uh, you make do with what you have.